Hello my dears and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be getting cozy at home with a vintage nightgown from 1956. All right my dears, welcome back. I must admit that my make today has been heavily influenced by the week that we have had here at our house. We have had a rash of spring fever and not just spring fever wanting to get out, but all of the colds that can come with springtime. So we've been stuck in our house. We've been bundled up in bed and bundled up on the sofa. And what we've really wanted to do is just be comfy and cozy in our pajamas. And so I thought it would be lovely to make a really beautiful vintage nightgown to wear when I'm not feeling my best. Now for that, I did go ahead and set aside all of the silks and the satins because I was thinking I want something that is durable, breathable, that can take me from winter to spring and from spring to summer. And so I'm going to go ahead and make this nightgown today out of a very breathable cotton. I did go ahead and choose to go with a white cotton that has eyelet stitching on it and it will be a vertical stitch. It has this really beautiful leaf pattern to it that I think will be really darling. However, for those of you who may be familiar with the Rocky Mountains here in the United States of America, you will know that just because spring has sprung does not mean that we are without a, an occasional snow shower. So I am gonna be doing the top portion of the pajamas with this very cute snowflake pattern because we generally do get at least one snowstorm before Easter or even on Easter here where I am from. So I have these two. I have the beautiful white eyelet fabric. I have this lovely cotton snowflake fabric. And then for the top in this particular pattern, they show it being um, finished off with lace at the top. Now I don't have a ton of it, but I did have a little bit of this cotton eyelet lace. Again, breathable, summery, spring, and washable and durable, which really works out well in my house where I've got a bunch of strapping lads running around all day long. So my goal is to go ahead and top the trim off with this to give it a little bit of femininity, but still keep it nice and durable and nice and washable. So without further ado, let's get diving right into the instructions for this pattern. Let's get stitching. All right, my dears. Now for this particular pattern, they actually have this really lovely large instruction sheet and it is very detailed. Not only do they go into the full nightgown, they go into the shorter nightgown, they go fully into the bloomers and they do a really lovely job. And this is one of the Simplicity So Simple uh, patterns. And so that's one of the reasons they do this. This was really truly meant for beginners. And I think it's a wonderful place to start if you are wanting to sew, if you're wanting to learn how to sew, patterns like this are really beautiful because they are very simple. They are not highly fitted. And as a result, you can take your time, read through each step of the instructions, make it exactly as it is written without having to worry about going in and doing a ton of alterations to fit waistlines, bust lines, hip lines, you can just make a beautiful garment and really enjoy it. So this I think is a wonderful pattern for anyone who is wanting to learn how to sew and wanting to pick out a first time pattern. For this, we're gonna go ahead and start with nightgown, the full nightgown view. That is the option that we are choosing to make today. And that's this one here. This is shown with a belt and it does have a small section uh, that you can cut out of the fabric or you can utilize a ribbon to create a waistline with this gown. I don't think I'm going to do that today. I like the idea of simply having a nice flowing nightgown. I can always nip in my waist later with a lovely robe that perhaps we will revisit in a future video. But for right now, when I'm being cozy at home, especially when we're not feeling our best, I just want everything to be nice and flowy and free. So today we're gonna skip the belt which means we're gonna get straight into the body of this nightgown. The first thing that they want us to do is put some bias binding in the underarm area. Now, when you're looking at this full view of the nightgown, 
you can see that the top area is going to be covered by this top neckline piece. And then of course the sides are tucked into the seams and the bottom will be very easy to hem. However, that means that these underarm sections are gonna be left raw. And that is why they're having us start here by adding some bias binding. Now, if you have bias binding in your stash of notions, then of course you can just grab it out, get the closest color you can to match whatever your uh, fabric is that you're utilizing for your project. If you don't have any bias binding out there, do not worry. You can always cut bias binding out of the material that you're using for your project, or even in an instance like this, use some scrap pieces. Because what we're really trying to do is create a nice finished look, which means I can come over here to the armpit area. I can add this little scrap fabric. I can stitch a line, then flip and press. And if I really want, I can even do some under stitching to make sure that this other fabric really gets tucked down underneath to the interior of the garment, making it a nice, clean, beautiful garment. So I am not going to use any of my bias binding because I do have these little off cuts left over after cutting the pattern out. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize that fabric so that nothing goes to waste. So we will go ahead and get this stitched into the underarms here, and then we will move right on to this next step, which is adding the gathering stitches across both the front and the back of the nightgown. I will be doing this on my sewing machine. You can, of course, always do a gathered stitch by hand, but I do like the, the evenness of doing it with my sewing machine. And to do this, I simply put the sewing machine on the widest stitch possible. I do two lines of stitches with that, and then I can use those to pull and gather up that material. So let's go ahead and start that here, getting the bias binding in the armpits and getting the gathering stitch across the top. All right, my dears, we have gone ahead and gotten the underarm sections lined, pressed, and stitched over the top to keep those in place. I then also went ahead and took my pinking shears and trimmed in very close to that stitch line, that seam line, so that it's gonna be nice and small and tight up underneath the underarm and you're not gonna have an additional wad of fabric kind of bunching up under the arms and causing any type of discomfort. I did also go ahead and run that double line of wide stitches across the top band from side to side, so it's time to gather. So one thing you want to be careful of when you are gathering is to not simply grab one side and whoop, whip it all out, because you can just pull these strings straight out and then you'll be right back at the sewing machine putting another line in, or if you have done this by hand, you're gonna be sitting right back down in your chair to get it all done again. So when I'm doing something like this to prevent myself from accidentally pulling the stitching out, pulling these threads out, I sometimes will tape it down if it's a large heavy garment that I'm working with that I'm pulling from one side to the other. Or if I'm working with a lighter fabric such as this cotton, I will actually pull from both sides. So I'll start on one side grabbing the two inner strings, leaving the two outer threads. And now that I'm kind of close to the center, I will come to the other side, grabbing just my two inner strings, leaving the threads on the outside for the front of the gown. And I will work my way in toward the center here. And now I have two long threads on either side, which is going to ensure that neither side gets pulled out of place accidentally. I'm gonna go ahead and try to just get this gathering as evenly distributed as I can. Here. Pretty cute. And get it set aside because we really can't do much more with that for the moment. So let's get the back drawn up as well, making sure to grab the two inner threads closest to us, leaving the two outer threads out of the garment, giving it a little tug, being gentle. We also don't wanna break the thread. I'm using a basic cotton thread because I'm sewing cotton today. 
opposite side, grabbing just my inner threads. Now this is also important to grab just the inner threads, leaving the outer threads to go, because if you grab both, it kind of locks everything up, locks the stitch up, and prevents you from being able to pull things in and gather them up. That's not what we want today. All right, these are pretty even. And now remember, I can always go back and fiddle with this and futz with it when I have the top band ready to go. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to the next step in our instructions, which is the construction of the front band. Now the front band you can see here is just a straight piece of fabric. And it is this straight piece of fabric that is also going to be coming across the front, taking a turn and going up over for the straps. And it's going to be doing this by utilizing a mitered stitch. So instead of having two pieces of fabric that are cut at an angle, it's one piece of fabric, but then you're gonna be taking that wedge of fabric out with your seam. So we have, this was laid onto a seam line. So this piece of fabric will actually be larger than it appears here. It's going to be this nice long piece of fabric here. Okay, I'm gonna open that all the way up. We have two pieces here, one for the front and one for the back. We're gonna go ahead and place our paper straight back on. Grab our handy dandy chalk pen. And whoever owned this pattern before me put little holes in the dots for me. So that's pretty handy. Those two anyway. Now I can go ahead and mark that triangle here that I'm going to be cutting and stitching. I come all the way to my other side here of my other side of fabric and do the same thing. Mark my dots. Now I have it marked on the inside of my fabric and I can see exactly where I need to pin and where I need to sew. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process on our second band here and get these ready to go to the sewing machine. All right, my dears, I have gone ahead and folded along the line like it indicates stitched here along the broken line to create those mitered corners. Now what it wants us to do is to go ahead and trim this section off. So we're gonna be coming up nice and close to that stitch line. And then we'll go over to our iron and we will press that out. Okay, now from there, it's gonna have us directly attach the band to the nightgown. They are doing this with raw edges exposed because they are anticipating that you are going to be trimming the top as well as the bottom and the outsides with lace, which we do have our lacing for the top portion. However, because I do not have enough lace to do this top portion over the shoulders, across the back, underneath, around the arms, under the bust line, etc. I did go ahead and make not just two bands, but four bands that I will go ahead and press out, cut all of these mitered corners and get it ready to go. And then I will go ahead and stitch them together and flip them so that we have a finished edge all the way around here, here, and here. I will have to tuck this edge in 
and go ahead and press it in and top stitch it, that's fine with me. But I'd like to make sure that the edges all the way around the front band, the neckline band, are nice and clean since I will not be going around the entire thing with bric-a-brac or lace. So let's go ahead and get all of these pieces cut open here, pressed open, and then get our bands put together, stitched together, and then flipped and pressed and ready to go on to our nightgown. Okay, we have gone ahead and clipped our mitered corners, pressed things down, and then I did in fact move a step ahead and I attached the shoulder seams of the collar and the neckband. Now the reason I have done this is because I'm going to put these two bands together and then flip them. Now the original instructions do have you putting the front band together, putting it on the top of the nightgown, putting the back band together, putting it on top of the nightgown, and then closing the shoulder seams after the fact. I am going to make this departure from the way the instructions are written because I don't want to have these raw edges on the upper part of the shoulders where they could pop out and be visible. Again, this particular pattern they were anticipating you were gonna be doing lace or bric-a-brac or ruffling. And since we're not going to be doing that and we are going to be doing this flipped collar, I'm gonna go ahead and step away from the instructions for just a minute. We're gonna put it together. Now this may mean that we're making a little bit more work for ourselves because we are gonna to have to be fighting more material because we will have both sides of the nightgown to contend with at the same time. However, because I want the finished garment to have a cleaner look, I am willing to put up with that on the back end in order to ensure that the rest of the garment comes together nice and clean and we don't have any raw edges sticking out being unsightly where we don't want them. So in order to do this, I am gonna take my collars here and put them right sides together. Now I do have my cute little lace. And so in order to use this, if I wanna put it in without having to tack it on after the fact, I want to slip it in here between the layers. Okay, now the thing that we need to consider is how far we can go with the amount of lace that we have and can we make it all the way around the collar or not. And we don't have enough. <laughs> we don't have enough. I could just put it across the front, but that will leave me with some raw edges if I choose to do that. If I don't have it go across the back, if I only have it say go around the shoulders and across the front, or even if I just have it go just across the front, that would mean that I would have some raw edges I would need to contend with. And I would have to decide how I feel about that. I feel like what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just flip a quick stitch here so that we don't have the big yucky raw edge on our lovely lace. And then we're gonna go up over the shoulders and across the front, but we won't go across the back. Is that gonna look funny? They're pajamas, do I care? Like if I like it, does it matter if they're not perfect? Is the lace gonna bother me on here anyway? Wondering if the lace is gonna be scratchy against my skin and that's gonna bother me having it on and then I'm not gonna wear this nightgown that we've put the effort into making. And I know that originally the nightgown has lace. It's got lace like all over it. And I think maybe it's just not me. 
I found this and this is really sweet little eyelet lace. It's actually left over from a blessing gown that I made for my niece, but I'm just not sure if I want it on my nightgown because then I think I might not wear it as much. So I actually think I'm gonna leave this off. I'm gonna leave the lace off entirely, which is fine because we've gone ahead and done the collar twice, which means we can flip it. It's gonna look clean. It's gonna look great. We're not gonna have any raw edges hanging out. We're just gonna get this collar put together. We're gonna to get it attached to the nightgown and we're gonna have a fabulous nightgown to wear even if it doesn't have any lace. And if we regret our decision, we can always hand stitch the lace on after the fact. But for right now, let's go ahead and get our collar pieces put together, stitched into place, and then flipped so that it looks really nice and clean. All right, my dears, we officially have our collar piece completed. I went ahead and did both sides, pressed it, flipped it. I then also top stitched, so it's gonna stay in place really nicely. The underside is not going to flip out. And then over here, you can see this has a nice clean edge. These are going to be going over the shoulders. Those edges have been pressed in and stitched into place as well. We do still have a raw edge here at the bottoms and that's all right because this is where we're going to be attaching our gown to. So we've got our nightgown over here. It is time to start putting this into place with this. Now for this we are going to have our collar flipped so that the right side is toward us. And we are going to have our nightgown with the right side facing that as well. I'm going to line up the sides here and just go ahead and pin things into place. Then once we have this nice and secured, we can take our gathered stitches and we can continue to gather across until we have everything lined up the way we want it. Making sure that the gathers are nice and evenly distributed across the front of the nightgown. my dears we have the front and back of our nightgown attached to our collar which means the next step for us according to our instructions is to go ahead and put these long side seams in we're going to stop a little bit short is what it wants us to do so that we can do some bias binding or lace binding around the bottom as well as an additional ruffle or lace now, because we have eliminated the lace out of the top collar, and this is a basic cotton, I have decided I do not want to do bias binding and I don't want to do any lace along the bottom. Instead, I'd like to really just do a nice hem, a nice clean rolled hem. So instead of doing these side seams, we're going to do a bit of cheating, a bit more modification on this pattern. And instead we're gonna come along while our front and back pieces are still separate and sew a hemline around the bottom. And then we'll come down and do these long seams here, meeting with the hemline, making everything clean and simple and making it so we don't have to do a big loop of fabric 
through our sewing machine. Instead, we can do a nice straight line and get this zipped up. After we do that, we've got a beautiful nightgown ready to go. All right, my dears, let's talk wrap up on these very sweet 1950s pajamas. This nightgown was a lot of fun to make. It was very, very quick to make, and I think it would be a wonderful project for a beginner sewist, someone who's wanting to dip their toes in the water of sewing, so to speak, and someone who possibly likes a little bit of vintage style and vintage flair. Now, we did make a couple of modifications to this particular pattern. We removed the ruffling or lace work that they had really banded across the entire top collar portion over the tops of the sleeve as well as along the bottom of the nightgown. And while that is a really lovely look and very sweet, I'm glad that I did not add it for myself because I think over time that makes it feel more like a fancy pajama set or nightgown to me and less like something I'm going to just snag out of my drawer and put on to feel comfy and lovely in my home. I also know that for myself having something roughly or lace up and around my neckline or around my arms may cause me to be a little bit itchy or it may tickle and feel funny and so it might make it less likely for me to wear this garment to bed or if I'm wanting to relax say wearing it while I'm doing a bit of knitting. So glad I did eliminate that. I am also glad that we doubled up on this top band here because it really did finish everything off. There are no raw edges up at the top to be scratchy or to fray or to cause any types of lumps or wadding of material. So I do like that we did that. However, with that being said, if I were going to be making this again in the future, I would consider doing this top band out of a thinner cotton or a softer material. And the reason for that is this is really pretty stiff because we doubled it up. The other reason is that despite this being the proper size across here and the fact that I really do like the uh, volume of fabric that we have in the bottom, this top portion for me is a little bit loose. There's a little bit going on here. It doesn't quite lay flat. And so I think if I made it again, I would make it out of a softer material and I would maybe nip out a little bit more, maybe in these side seams here in order to pull this in and allow it to lay flat, but just in the front because I feel like the back does lay nice and flat already with this pattern. I did say during the video when we were making it, I was not going to add the belt. And of course I finished this up and turned the camera off and then looked at it on my mannequin and thought, no, I need to make the belt. <laughs> the belt is gonna really finish it off. And while I won't be wearing the belt to bed or wearing the belt when I'm totally in lounge mode, I definitely think it adds a sweet touch, especially when you're walking around in it and it makes you feel like you look very pretty because it kind of nips in right at the waist and defines the waist a little bit. So very happy about that. Now, I am very thrilled that I made this out of a nice washable cotton. It is super breathable and very comfy to relax in. I will say if I were to make it again and make it out of perhaps something like a nice fleece or a flannel for the winter, I would consider putting pockets in because even though it's pajamas, a girl can never have too many pockets. When you're walking around the house in your loungewear, being comfy, you might just wanna have your chapstick or a hanky with you, maybe a small ball of yarn if you're working on a knitting project. And so I think having pockets in the sides of the pajamas, this nightgown would be a really lovely feature. And so if I do ever make this one again and I do it in a slightly thicker fabric, I think I will add those pockets to it. Overall, this was a lovely, fun make. I'm thrilled with the outcome. I'm definitely going to get use out of this. And I just think it looks very sweet and very vintage. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. If you like vintage patterns and sewing, if you like costuming, please hit that like and subscribe button 
down below. I would love to have you along on my journey. And I can't wait to meet you guys back here next week for more videos on our knit along. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Bye.